Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. What a joyful experience to watch these Fisher Random games in Norway. It's the first of the Fisher Random Championship, and if you watched that final game of round one between Magnus and Wesley, all 96 moves played a part in shaping up that game. Ending in a draw, Wesley now has the white pieces, but can he crack Magnus? Expect it all here, guys. Wesley started it with a D for opening. Magnus opened up already the diagonal, and through knight g3, Magnus comes up with his top up response. He wants to stop this central pawn from making it into the game, and though technically, this move is very playable. Wesley simply ignores. Wesley has played some excellent 960 games. And he's the only one yet to lose a single game since the semi finals had started. He opened up the path to his queen. And if you get the opening right, you're halfway there. Fisher Random has never really caught up, but since everyone loves it, this will change. It is far more exciting than regular chess, but this comes with a twist. It's all about finding those positions that matter. And this is easier said <coughs> and this is easier said than done. E6, C4, and D5. And we'll begin to see many moves repeat from the previous encounter. E3 was also replicated, but let's see what and how much is going to change. After bishop e7 and knight c3, black knight number one was developed. And after bishop d3, doesn't seem to be anything concrete. With times as initial setup position reaches some degree of familiarity, these openings will also normalize. These fish around the games, like sailing into an open sea. <clears throat> and you never know where that ship is taking you, even if you are the captain. Where Magnus got the king to safety, Wesley did exactly the same thing. These castles are not easy to make on conventional boards. And for now, I find it really hard to make these moves for the players. Knight BD7. Does not obstruct the rock's view. And I guess Wesley is trying to do something with this type of obstruction. And he does. He took this pawn. And before being able to deal with the taking on d5, the bishops were removed. And only now d5 came off. The entire idea of this trade was to allow Wesley to elevate the knight to a square he couldn't otherwise reach. And once he finally managed this particular move, <coughs> he's going to be more than happy to trade him for Mr. Bishop. And with the bishop being restricted, the only way to cover is in fact do nothing because this bishop is covered. But this gave Magnus an extra tempo. How does he do it? He got the rook ready. Wesley was after the bishop, so he removed him. Wesley has a good control of the center, but also has some pieces he needs to get to become active. The main important piece is the queen. And piece number two is this bishop. The rook on d3 is also not very comfy, but given Magnus's pieces are no better positioned, the queen for sure is not okay. But with all these pawns on the board, we might be here all day. Bishop a3 doesn't work due to c5, and if you allow this, black will be substantially better. c5 is an important square, and the first thing Wesley does is to block his axis to c5. There is another objective for this move. b4 also attacks the pawn on d5, but how difficult is it to cover? Both c6 and knight f6 are sufficient. And this is how Magnus does it. And now came this guy advancing. Where is he going? 
nowhere. For now, he still blocks c5, but not c6. And talking of c6, this is what Magnus does. a4, h5, and now h3. And Magnus knows how important it is to get his queen to come into the game. He repositioned her here. And when West decided to remove this pawn, not takes, but rook e6. By the way, this pawn is going nowhere. It also cannot be covered. Wesley came up with this move. c6 came off. And now e4 appeared. And this is how you make progress. Moves like this. Or about activating pieces. And observe how this bishop is going to spring to life. The knight is most likely to get pinned. But is Magnus going to allow this? Takes. Takes. And Magnus gets there first. He used the pin to attack the rook. Rook out to e3. Another attack. And another rook repositioning. And Magnus is gaining space. And he doesn't make it look so easy. He knows exactly how to coordinate his pieces. With d4 sitting idle. And completely unprotected. Do you have this guy for breakfast? Magnus took him, and this guy now jumps to another level. When the knight was elevated here, this rook is now trapped. And it appears he's taken on d4. Looks to be a mistake. The only move to save this rook is to eliminate this pawn. I don't think Magnus had any doubts as to what he needed to do. e4 does come off. Remove the knight from f6. When all these pieces come off, a straight queen e6 will appear. White's attack goes nowhere, and black is a full pawn up. And this is something Wesley was not going to have. So what he did was to go for a rather intriguing type of response. It looks crazy because he offered his bishop to be able to open up the position, just like Magnus did in his previous game of round one. Magnus sat on this for six minutes, and when he decided how to avoid the taking. He backed off the knight. But it was wartime already. G7 came off. And should you go on to remove this bishop, there is rook takes f7. And this game is over instantly. You simply cannot stop the mate unless you hand over your queen. So this was not an option for Magnus. Needless to say, this bishop was not eliminated. But instead... It was Magnus's turn to turn on the heat. He delivered this fork. And when Wesley removed f7, do we have a game or do we have a game? We have seen many great games and this one has to be added to the list. One thing both players are doing is to sacrifice left, right and centre to gain that degree of superiority. When the rook came off. Wesley has the queen, the rook, the bishop and knight. And with every piece working in harmony with each other. With probably the exception of the knight on d5. How can Wesley make an effective use of his pieces? Wesley is never scared of handing over whatever piece or pieces to get the job done. And this is what he's doing right now. Magnus is no less and does exactly the same. If you capture the knight with whatever piece, your attack on the king goes up in thin air. If you take with the queen, what do you think happens after rook c1? To keep the momentum of this game, Wesley moved in with a check. And when the king was forced to the rim, the bishop was immediately withdrawn. And without delay, here came in Mr. Rook. And how on earth do you deal with this threat? This check was the answer. Pushing the king forward. And now, when this fork appeared, we know the queen drops. But also the queen on a1 drops. After king f7, Wesley was in no rush to remove the queen. 
he sneaked in another check, only when the king went forward. Wesley was looking for a way to continue with the checks so that he could save his own queen. Queen A2 is met by Queen C4. And this is how he saved the queen. Once Wesley figured this one out, the queens did come off. And when the rook on A1 disappeared, who's better and who's not? The knight on F1 is in danger. The pawn on A7 is ready to come off. So I guess white might be better. But the question is whether white is able to win. Knight out of danger and rook takes. Got the knight to return to a more active square. There is a reason for this. Can you see it? Magnus wants to pick up the bishop here through rook e1. But with the knight being on g3 after king h2, the bishop could be taken in exchange for the knight. Look what Wesley does here. He shot the bishop from one corner of the board to the other. Rook e2, g4, takes and takes. And Magnus knows he's in trouble. If knight anywhere, or even where the knight moved. And this is what he did. When this check rolled in, king d5 and rook takes. And now the coast is clear. Wesley is as good as there. And what a game you need to play to beat Magnus. But Magnus is not beating yet. A check, king to the edge and rook takes. Got this knight eliminated too. But when did you see Magnus to resign an ending game like this one? He lives for these moments. Even if he is lost, he has nothing to lose. But we know how things work. It's not over until that fat lady sings. When this check appeared, the bishop was picked up. And when the knight took with a check, it's all about the battle for single pawn. King c5. Rook b3, stopping the access to the king anywhere west. And when the pawn was attacked, when Wesley delivered this check, when the king was forced north, Wesley returns the rook to the first. Rook h5, knight back, and rook back to h4. And from this point on, we're looking at at least another 35 moves before the end of this game. Wesley was forced to repeat here. And now, when the knight returned to the second, Magnus was determined to find a way out of this one. When Wesley chased after the rock, Magnus kept him on the same rank. King f3, king a5. And after this, rook back and rook to the edge, which is an important move. And after these few moves, it was all about the king being able to come to the support of this so important pawn. A check, king to the edge, and now Magnus has no option but to challenge the rook. Rather than take, this is how Wesley does it. Rook to the rim, and after this check was delivered, when the king was forced back, any ideas how to do this? King b4, when Magnus tried this avenue of play. After this check and king a7, when the knight made his way up the board, or even Magnus can survive this one. King b7 was followed by this check. And when the king returned to a7, looking at Magnus's demeanor, I think he wants to resign. Rook g6, cutting out the king, or shall I say, restricting him to the last two ranks, got Magnus in with this check. King a5, rook h1, and now this check. And this is how you do it. With Mr. King forced to the back rank, after king a6, rook h5, and now this check. And this was the very last move in this game. Does this come as a surprise to anyone? And only a beautiful game. But Wesley is on the money. He knows Magnus is no pushover and will bounce back. He always does. But for now, Wesley's using with confidence. Not only he wins Magnus, but also he still remains unbeaten since the Super Finals begun. 
Game one was dramatic enough, but what an absolutely fantastic development in round two of the finals. This game was fantastic in so many different ways. The offer on the King's side was something else. And look how this got Wesley. A Wesley who is not showing any nerves whatsoever. And a Wesley who has everything going for himself. Looking forward for what is to come next. So until soon, everyone, this is your chess puzzler.